What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the potential for a government shutdown after tonight. So after September 30th, Saturday after midnight, if the Congress does not come to a conclusion for the fiscal budget for the new fiscal year, which begins in October, October 2023, then there is possibility for a government shutdown. And not only that, there is a possibility for us to see no CPI report in September. Uh, for, for the month of September, that's going to be in October. So October 12th is when we are going to get the next CPI report, or at least when we are supposed to get the next inflation report. But of course, if there is a government shutdown, which are, which is expected to be about 13 days long, then of course there is not going to be a CPI report because the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is also going to be shutting down as part of the government shutdown. So in this video, I'm going to break down all the forward inflation fixings. In other words, what is the expected future inflation uh, based on the inflation fixings market and also talk about a little bit about the government shutdowns and how that could affect the economy and the markets as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining and of course getting access to all the binds alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, members only private videos, everything's going to be included as well as the 16% annual discount that also expires tonight after midnight so you can take advantage of it while it's still here. Link's going to be down below and uh, I appreciate you guys very much for being a part of our MoneyVest community. So first of all, what is a government shutdown? So it happens when Congress does not approve the discretionary spending for the upcoming fiscal year which begins on October 1st as I mentioned earlier and a shutdown affects nearly every corner of the U.S. government from delivery of welfare checks and publishing of national economic data to the operation of federal courts, museums, and national museums as well. And hundreds of thousands of federal workers are likely to be furloughed, and that's going to be closer to 800,000 workers were furloughed in the last government shutdown. This would be the fourth shutdown in a decade, and this time around, the ripple effect may extend even further, resulting in an even larger number of furloughed workers, and this includes workers across federal government agencies, including the Department of Defense, members of the military. All this would disrupt the national security, of course, is what also White House warned about uh, this week. Now, this right here is from Stacey Sanders, Bureau of Labor Statistics press office, so literally the BLS themselves, they mentioned that in the event of the federal government shutdown, the Bureau of Labor Statistics will suspend data collection processing and dissemination once funding is restored BLS will resume normal operations now this is not great because the Federal Reserve is directly watching the CPI the inflation numbers which will come out on October 12 that's at least when they're scheduled to come out um, and of course if BLS is not going to collect data they're not going to report on any data well guess what we could risk not getting a CPI report and traders may have to deal with a quote missing consumer price index for September and that's going to come out in October very very unusual but that's the world we live in. The U.S. government is on pace for a partial shutdown in less than two days. So again, tonight's uh, probably going to be after midnight is when that decision is going to be made. And leaving the next major U.S. inflation report in a state of limbo, with the potential to inject uncertainty into the minds of inflation traders and central bank officials, the September CPI set for October 12th could go missing or be delayed, which might force the government to rely on a replacement index, according to Morgan Stanley. Um, and that replacement index is going to be very much tied to inflation fixings and, of course, the expectations of inflation as well. So while shutdown st that starts just after midnight on Saturday seems inevitable and it's a near consensus view in Washington, how long it might last is still a big question, right? So even if we do get into a government shutdown because of not being approved with the discretionary spending budget, how long is that going to go on for is still a big question because, you know, the longer it persists, the bigger the problem will become eventually. Um, and the likelihood of a shutdown was sent at 90%. So there's a 90% chance uh, that the government is going to shut down after tonight. Uh, this was on earlier Friday with an anticipated length of 13 days. In addition, traders saw only a 28% chance that the September's inflation data will be released on time. So can you believe that? Only 28%, in other words, 72% of people, of, of investors or traders basically anticipate that September's inflation data will not be released on time and 90% probability that the government is going to go into a shutdown and slightly less than one in four chance that September's jobs report will arrive as expected on October 6th. So first Friday of the month, October 6th. So of course, only one in four chance, 75% that it's actually going to get delayed or not be reported, uh, of course, on time. So that is something to keep in mind. And this right here is the longest U.S. government shutdowns in the past. So 1977, we had 12 days. 2013, we had 16 days. 1978 we had 18 days 1995 we had 21 days and the more recent one 2018 we had 30 
five days, a little bit over a month, the government was shut down. So there's a little bit of statistics there to go over. And this is the chart of the day, which is pretty much going over the inflation fixings and basically telling us what that year over year CPI number is going to look like. And we are not expected to dip below 3% until until April of 24. So this is based again on inflation fixing numbers and 3.58% is the consensus right now. Even if you don't get the CPI report on time, I think this is what the market is most likely going to be trading on, which is going to be again released on October 12th, probably going to be delayed. But this right here is the forward inflation fixings on uh, September 30th up until September 30th. Uh, we're looking at a 3.5%. So again, September 30, 22 to September 30, 23, we're looking at a 3.58% number, and that's going to slowly and steadily decline a little bit of that increase in December once again, and then coming back down to under 3%, then back over 3%, then uh, then then more realistically under 3% uh, starting in April of 24. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a while until CPI obviously dips below 3%, and then we're still nowhere near close to the Fed's target. Of course, core inflation is what the Federal Reserve is really watching. PC numbers did come in a little bit better than what the consensus was, but energy prices continue to keep uh, some, some pressure on inflation uh, at the moment as they are starting to push back higher. So that's where we are. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. A government shutdown will most certainly generate disruptions for sure, but the fixings market will trade based on whatever the government issues, uh, and that's should be adequate for now uh, and it really is just a technical bump and the final destination is what really matters for investors at the moment as well this was uh, gang who from capital partners uh, as well so that's where we are let me know in the comment section down below what do you think i do believe that you know the cpi report and the jobs report are very very important indicators for the market i mean this is really what we are watching on a regular basis to better make decisions and to better understand you know what is the most likely outcome from the federal reserve standpoint because at the end of the day a strong jobs report and a strong inflation print could obviously increase the probability for us to see potentially one more rate hike in 23, as I've already mentioned, but a weaker jobs report and a uh, inflation rate that's actually coming down is going to be good because that's going to lead to more potential uh, cuts. And, and of course, that likelihood that the Federal Reserve may not uh, increase rates in 23 and of course, see some more cuts. So a lot of that interest rate expectations are directly tied to jobs report and inflation numbers. And of course, markets and equities and, and how the markets actually are going to be moving is directly tied to interest rate expectations. So it's all in a chronological fashion. But of course, if you break that link, between the jobs report and the CPI report not really being released, then of course we are going to have to just wait until those numbers come out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Links to our Discord Patreon is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. As always, 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. So literally just tonight after tonight, it's going to go away. So take advantage of it while it's here. Link's going to be down below. Happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.